Today we are discovering what secrets Survivor China did not tell us in the edited TV show. Some of these will be game related, some are strategic, and some are just plain silly. Basically, as long as it isn't part of the show that aired on TV, it is fair game to be considered a secret, and while most of the secrets here are focused on Survivor China, some of them do apply to Survivor as a whole. Heads up, this list contains the secrets that I personally found to be the most interesting. Not every single secret in existence about this season is in this video. So with that, let's count all 39 of them in absolutely no particular order. 39 days, 16 people, one Survivor. Number one, Denise the lunch lady. She was likable, down on her luck, and she says she was fired from her job. At the reunion, Mark Burnett gave her a bunch of money. But what you may not know is that she lied to us all. She wasn't fired, she was promoted to a better paying job as a janitor. And since she was caught in this lie, she donated all the money Mark gave her. But what I found curious is when I watched the red carpet interviews, how you can see her slip up on her story. Lunch ladies don't scrub toilets. I'm in total shock. I was shaking. I was like, I cannot believe this. And yeah, I mean, I didn't come out here saying I scrub toilets to make extra money. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to be, you know, like myself. I'm just trying to be an honest person and, and, and I'm just so happy. Number two, chicken. Did you know that his favorite place to vacation is the Hoover Dam? Ugh, dad jokes aside, when chicken dropped this bomb of information during the preview for the season, I was like, wait, what? My ex-wife, my first wife was saving my father and I didn't know about it. it was terrible. The last guy found out about it, the first thing I did was tell my mom. And the first thing she said, she kicked his ass out and arrived. With that, thanks for watching Once Upon an Island. Liking and subscribing really helps, and if you want to pick what videos I make and watch every video weeks and even months early, then consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Patreon makes everything here possible and allows the channel to be free of sponsors and advertisers. Thank you for your support. Number three, Jeff Probst's predictions on how the cast will do are infamously terrible. If you watch any other Secrets video, oh, you'll know this. I would say his success rate is about 10 to 15%. But this season, surprisingly, he's right on the money. I think Amanda's somebody that people might look at and think, ah, eh, pretty girl, she won't last long. I wouldn't bet against Amanda. She could win this game. Sharia is a fourth grade teacher that I don't think had any idea what she was getting into. I think she'd probably just be delighted to go home early. And I think she will. Sorry, Sharia. I don't see it. I haven't seen it from the time I've met him. What would surprise me is if Jean Robert lasted till late in the game. I think Todd's very good at knowing when to get out of the way and you be the hero. And I'm, yes, I'm learning from you, you know? He'll make somebody a mentor. I expect Todd to be around for a while. Courtney, if she lasts, will be a star on the show because of her acerbic wit. PG is not gonna be anybody's friend. I think it'd be very hard for PG to win this game because in the end, she's gonna irritate a lot of people. I think James is gonna really do well. I think he's gonna be liked by his tribe and be a real quiet leader, and I'm already pulling for him. Number four, China is a beautiful location and a breath of fresh air after watching seasons 19 to, well, the seasons we get today, as they reuse the seemingly three or four locations over and over again, a lot of them being in the South Pacific. So what does Jeff say about visiting China for Survivor? Survivor picked China because if we stayed another season in the South Pacific, we were going to lose our minds. Number five, sometimes when Jeff Probst does a sketch with Mad TV, it is pure gold. Sometimes it's just okay. And this time it is so, so bad. I will link this in the description. I'm used to immunity challenges. I banged half a Thailand in the 70s. Come. Survivor's ready. Go. Oh, I'm exhausted. I guess I socked them out with my lumpy milkshake. Plays out. No, I'm not. I, I, I just haven't found the right girl yet. No, out of the game. Has any of you done anything? I quit eight times. Uh, ladies. Please. We all know who's the prettiest. 
Number six, Dave Cruiser is not a man I would describe as chill. I don't think Dave can chill, personally. Could you imagine if he was on the season for 39 days? Would he have ever calmed down or would he have just gotten more nutty? Because I think he just gets more nutty. Well, here is his pre-season analysis on himself. I deal with conflict really well. I like to resolve things. I like there to be a win-win scenario. I don't like anybody to be on the losing side of things. They will eventually, but uh, in the microcosm of the moment, having everyone feel good and respected and acknowledged is probably the best way to resolve a conflict. Number seven, Denise and her iconic mullet. A weird choice to have on Survivor in the mid 2000s and a weirder choice to have today, which you can still see in this interview. So how long has she had this? I've had this haircut since 1972. I haven't changed it one bit since I was like seven years old. Way before when it was in style. Number eight, in the secret scene from the pre-merge, we see James and Aaron basically starting a bromance and becoming instant best friends. Who knew? Aaron, he has a smug arrogance about himself, but he don't do nothing. He's charming, that's his thing, but he don't do nothing. And he's getting on my nerves. I didn't ask to be a leader and I'm not the leader, so why don't put me up on that high horse? You are the worst leader ever. Yeah, okay. Well then you be the leader. If you can do such a good job, you be the leader. You suck. You're and about then yourself. you're the leader now. Are you not or not about yourself? No, I'm about you, you can give a damn about the team. It is about Eric. He has the master plan to have pulled all this together and we'd be lost without you. Number nine. John Robert is the de facto villain of this season and what we didn't see on the show was all the funny confessionals people had when voting him out. Your game is poker. This is my game. Time to go. For you because when you snore at nighttime it sounds like someone's choking a walrus and also we're like arch nemeses we hate each other you should have seen this coming you've escaped so many times we have been like a cat with nine lives this time scraped a couple of breaths well survivor i hope tonight is your night and i hope this is the last time i have to vote for you Number 10. What we also didn't see in the pre-merge was John Robert and Sharia becoming best friends, just like James and Aaron. Who knew? I can't stand John Robert. He likes to hear himself. He's full of himself. And he never says anything that really matters. So I'll let him keep talking to me. And I'll keep listening. He's still disgusting, though. Ugh. Number 11. In this secret scene I'm surprised didn't make the final cut, Todd talks about his Mormon faith and how he only pretends to be a Mormon to appease his parents. I do it mainly for my mom and dad though. That's good. To make them happy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was raised Mormon in a very, very religious family and religious friends and religious neighbors and at 19, you know, my mom found out I was gay. And being a religious family, it was rough at first, and my mom had a hard time. My mom cried about the fact that I was gay, but uh, she loves me. And, you know, I'm very happy with the way my life is going. Through that, I gained a personality, and I slowly learned who I was. So I think part of the reason why I'm so strong is because this is part of what I am, not who I am. But as far as my life, I don't care what people think about me. I think this gives him a lot of character depth that feels weird to leave out of the winner story. Number 12. Okay, so when I started this video, I said the secrets are in no particular order. And, well, they are for the most part, but for once I am going to break this rule. This secret is the first in a little mini story about Todd Herzog as his post survivor life has been a roller coaster. First, let's start with some foreshadowing from him on the red carpet after his win. It hasn't sunk in yet that I just won a million dollars. I, ah, uh, you know, I'm 22 years old and I was, last week I was thinking I'm 22 and I've accomplished my dreams. Is this really like my peak? Point. Now with him saying that, well, in a way, he didn't just say it, but he believed it as he becomes an alcoholic and even goes on Dr. Phil multiple times. I'm just going to show the highlights slash lowlights. In my opinion, you're killing yourself, man. I am. Yeah, you're killing I am. Yourself. I know I am. Today, I had an entire bottle, uh, like a liter of vodka. And because I do usually two, maybe three a day. I hope it's low, low, way low number than, than what I've seen in the past. 0.263. Proud to announce he is 112 days sober. Todd, come on out. And it wasn't until like day 30 in treatment that I actually woke up and said, you are being given a gift here. 
yeah. accept this and, and take it and embrace it. What you say, Todd? I've had a bad few weeks. At 2.30 this morning, you had a blood alcohol level of 0.432. Are you drinking by yourself or are you drinking with somebody else? I'm myself. I always by myself. Number 13. So the previous secret was a sad series of events for someone who's doing it so well. Well, in this video posted online later, Todd says that actually Dr. Phil took advantage of him. But if this is true, why did he go back on multiple times? I show up to the studios and I'm sober. I'm hurting a lot and I'm shaking. My dad was there and I went and talked to him in his dressing room and I was completely sober. And then they pull me into my dressing room and there was two liters of vodka and like some Red Bulls and orange juice and stuff like that. You know, being unsupervised by my parents, I drank the entire bottle. And then at some point somebody gave me a Xanax. They said, this will calm your nerves. And so um, I had been drinking and took a Xanax, which I've never taken Xanax before in my life. And I know that can be a deadly combination. So why it was given to me, I don't know. Number 14. There is a happy ending to this story though. In an interview with Rob Sesternino, Todd explains that he finally hit rock bottom and that forced him to get his life cleaned up. A great thing to see after witnessing the sad events on Dr. Phil. But did you know that he now makes custom Funko Pops? I wanted the Spice Girls <laughs> and, and Funko does not have the Spice Girls. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make my own. Someone said, hey, can you make one of my son? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I did and he posted it and then a few other people asked and within about a month it exploded where all these people wanted customized Funko Pops and so I started doing it as just like a little hobby turned into a way to make some money. My dad, he had gone through years ago a dark period himself but he found a hobby where he would um, restore old phonographs. I thought it was weird. And, but he said to me, he was like, all you gotta do is find something that you enjoy doing and, and you will find yourself. And I feel like, you know, making toys has become a way that I've found myself where I found out like, oh my gosh, I'm creative. Kind of knew I had an imagination, but I didn't realize that I was artistically creative. Number 15. Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl back in the mid 2000s was an event that people talked about forever and made the NFL play it safe on halftime shows for a long, long time. But did you know Amanda had a wardrobe malfunction of her own on Survivor? I think like one of the funniest stories and I I hope you can put it on, but like we would go to the beach and she she always had this problem where her her top one side would fall down and I would always have to, I would call it the Janet Jackson check. And she would just giggle and Wardrobe laugh. Malfunction. And I'm like, Amanda, yeah, like, Amanda, your boob is hanging out again. And she's like, oh, <laughs> whoop. <laughs> like, and she would put it back. You That's miss. Amanda for you. Number 16, Frosty is a parkour master. He didn't really get the chance to show it off too much in this season, but he does go on to compete on American Ninja Warrior and... And getting ready for the jump hang. This has been a tough obstacle, but wow, right to the top rope of the cargo net. Jimmy, he is flying right now. And he can up the warped wall, Jimmy. We're looking at a fantastic time. He got it. Oh, wow. Frosty! Number 17, Survivor was the first American show that got to film in China. What a high honor. So how did they get the ability to do this when so many other shows were rejected? No network television shows ever really no. shot an entire season there before, We've been right? trying to get in there. I don't know why they finally said yes. I don't yeah. know if it's because they have the Olympics coming up and they want to open their arms. Right, right. Or if they watch Survivor and said, you know what, we've always treated other yeah. countries pretty well. Were they hanging over your shoulder? They, they weren't hanging over our shoulder, but there was one rule, which was they had a representative that at any time could look at any tape right. they wanted to right. make sure that we were portraying China in a positive light. We do a gross food eating challenge. Yeah. 
and they heard it and they thought, wait a minute, they gross food there. eating, this is not, not gross. Not in China. <laughs> this is our normal everyday lunch. Right, right. okay. So we had to kind of explain that yeah. it was a cultural thing, okay. that we don't eat this. Number 18, Courtney was not trying to get on Survivor, believe it or not. In fact, she was recruited and thought she would be the first one voted out and get to go on a vacation, which explains her final travel speech in my opinion. So how did this all happen? I was a waitress in New York. It was the night of the season before us was Fiji. The, the finale was in New York City. Lynn Spillman, the lady who cast everything, brought her friend after that finale to the, the restaurant I worked at just to eat and hang out. And she's like, I've been watching you for an hour. You have to be on my show. And I was like, what is your show? And she's like, it's Fiverr. I was like, is that even on? I mean, my first question was, what does last place get? Right? Like, so... <laughs> And they're like, you have to be there for three days and you'll get like a little bit of money and a vacation. And I was like, I am sold on that. I guarantee, but it was just like, she's like, you know, you seem like a fairly like, like, is this how you want to spend your summer? Like, you're probably not going to do that well. Like, do you want to, like, you'll be, is this cool? Like, you're going to, and I was like, this is great. So I packed like I was going on a whole vacation. And then, like, I remember we, my team won the first challenge and I was like, oh, wow, I'm not going to be the, like, I can't be the first person off. And then I was like, Oh no, I have to stay here for three more days. And I was like, I just doubled my trip. I was like, oh, this is terrible. And so I was like, I think we won the next one too. And I was like, this is just getting out of hand. Number 19, Courtney also wanted to quit. Yeah, she tried to, and the show begged and pleaded her not to. I tried to quit on the ninth day. I tried to quit several times. It's not easy. Like they really talk you in circles and, and I sat down on the ground and I was like, I'm not leaving. I, I was like, I'm not getting in the van. I'm not going to camp. I'm not going anywhere. And so then they were basically like, he was like, will you please not ruin our show? Like, can you, do you think that they might vote you out? Like, can you just be voted out instead? And I was like, all right. Because it was like the matter of a few hours. I was like, fine. And then I like went back to the camp and I was like to the producers. I'm like, what if they don't vote me out though? Then what? Then what? And they're like, don't worry about it. And then and then you finish and you realize they, they know what everyone's doing. They're never going to vote me out. And so I was like, they played me. They played me. Like <laughs> Number 20. The tribal council set for the season is magnificent. The art team was clearly motivated. So much more than they were in Fiji. And it shows in almost every facet of the season. So how was this all made? This was one of the biggest builds that we've done. It was seven tons of steel, six tons of concrete. There's two tons of tile that are on all of the roofs of, of Tribal. And as a result, all of the framing of this had to be steel. So it is a massive structure. In fact, the Tribal Council that we built here is the tallest building anywhere around. So as a result, we had to put a lightning rod at the top and a lightning grid underneath in case lightning strikes. This is kind of cool. This is the pen that they will use to write down the names, but the mold for this is actually an opium pipe. This is the bowl, this is the long shaft, and then this would have been the, uh, the mouthpiece. Number 21. As I said before, sometimes Mad TV sketches with Jeff can be gold, and sometimes they just suck. This one is up for your interpretation. Hey man, hey, what, hey, what's that show called, brother? What's that show called? I said Survivor. Survival. That's right, Survival. That's the show, man. Because you remember that one time when that one dude had the tattoo and he was running around on fire? And then the girl said, you got to get on up off this island, right? And then she said, you got to stop walking around all naked carrying chickens. Remember that? <laughs> remember that one? I don't, I don't know if I remember that one. Oh, but... you don't remember that one? That was the good one, dog. Check this one out. Okay, give it to me. R. All right. F. Break it down. B. Uh-huh. M. Okay, I don't know what that means. Break that down. <laughs> Let me it. tell you what All it right. means. R-F-B-M. Really freaking bugging me. Okay. <laughs> Number 22, the rise of online content brought an interesting series of vlog style videos from Jeff this season. In this first one, he goes through the day in the life of him, and I will include some highlights here, but watching the entire video is fascinating. Links in the description. It is 5.38 on day 15 for Survivor China, and this is going to be a day in the life. It's time to get ready for tribal, and that means one very important decision. What color of blue shirt to wear? Yes, believe it or not, they hang these shirts. 
along with survivor hats. Number 23. Earlier we saw Sharia dunk on John Robert and that was fun, but we know his true arch nemesis was Courtney. In this secret scene, that rivalry is explored in all of its underwearless glory. The guy who shows up to a game that throws you out into the middle of the jungle in a silk shirt and no underpants, you gotta wonder about that. Courtney thought it was silly that I wasn't wearing underwear. And I'm like, what do you mean it was silly? That's my shawl. You can't have it. Just until it's dry. <laughs> no, because like I'm gonna hours. sleep on it next to my face and I love you, but I don't want your junk. Here, put this. Wrap it around and then tuck that part through like the middle and tuck it in the front. But then my backside's fully exposed. We'll put, it, put that on the side. I can just have this drop down by the crack. Number 24, how has every secret scene I've shown you so far been about fighting with each other? James with Aaron, Cherie and John Robert, Courtney and John Robert, Todd and his parents. Can't we have a secret scene where people are just nice to each other? Well, you brought up to me yesterday about the whole thing with Denise and I hooking up with you and PG to vote off Ty. What, what was my answer? You didn't know what you're I said, you're lie. Lie. I said no. you are two of y'all and five of us. Why would my dumb ass go with you? You know, why would I take that chance? Like, oh, bro. I don't like that. I don't like people lying on me. And for Man, you to I go around. what you're going to do. And no, you've been spreading around that I don't know. It, it might be a question in the air. The reason why I went through the big performance I had with Eric, I was just merely stopping him from starting mess. Well, I just went over the fact that, no, I'm not with PG and Eric. They're by themselves. Todd, don't you worry about it. Group, don't you worry about it. James is with y'all. Number 25. Speaking of James, keep in mind the info I'm about to show you comes from Fair Play, so take that as you will. But on Survivor Micronesia, the show didn't want the players on that season to know how James or Amanda did on China because China hadn't finished airing before they played. So how did they find out anyways? When we show up for fans versus favorites, uh, James and Amanda are there but we don't know how their se their season played out. There was rumor in innuendo finish. that Amanda had won. So, uh, so production tells us they're like, hey, James and Amanda are on the current season. They are not allowed to talk about how they finished as per their, their confidentiality agreement. Do not ask them how they finished. They are not allowed to answer. And, uh, and I go, uh, well, I think it's safe to assume that one, if not both of them, won the million dollars. And uh, James goes, I got voted out with two idols. <laughs> 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 Number 26. Sadly, Ashley passed away not but a few years ago, but the secret here is how she got on Survivor once again, according to Fair Play. Survivor SEG had contacted WWE. They wanted a wrestler to be on Survivor. We got a, a high profile athlete. So they're sitting there like, we got John Cena. John Cena's playing Survivor. This is going to be amazing. And what do they get instead? Ashley Massaro, who, uh, you know, at the time having substance issues, they figure, why not send her away to 39 day rehab? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the highlight for me going into this finale was getting a call from Ashley Massaro. I don't think I'm going to the finale. And, uh, and I'm like, why not? And she is like, it, too much pressure. I can't do it. I, I don't. I don't think you'll get that many questions. I'll be honest with you. She goes, that's not the problem. Fair play. You don't understand how survivor works. And I was like, oh, well, please enlighten me. <laughs> and uh, she goes, I just, I can't decide who I feel deserves the million dollars. And I was like, <laughs> well, I just made your night a whole lot easier, Ashley. <laughs> you won't be burdened with that decision. <laughs> Number 27. Are you a fan of music videos from the 90s? Well, then PG may have been in one that you've seen many times and just never noticed her. As I found out, she has been in Janet Jackson, Madonna, and to have punk music videos. Who knew? Then there's former dancer PG who's appeared in videos from Madonna and Janet Jackson, and this California girl already knows the role she'll play in China. When I told anybody that I told that I was coming on here, they said, oh my God, you're gonna be the on the show. Number 28. For some reason this season, the TV Guide channel decided, hey, let's find out what all of the winners are up to as of 2007. And most of them aren't anything you can't already find out from my Heroes vs. Villains Secrets video, but this one with Danny Bowright stands out. I'm not gonna be Brett Favre and come back and try to win another championship. I won, I'm one and done, I'm out of there. And then having a child now, there's no way I think I could be away for 39 days again. But 
Um, I'll have fun watching other people live through it. <laughs> Number 29, The Dream Team. In Jeff's series of webisodes where he explores the behind the scenes of Survivor, he deep dives into the Dream Team in a way we never normally see. And while I am just showing the highlights, once again, the full video is in the description. A Dream Team is a crash test dummy. We essentially test and practice all the challenges before the survivors do them. So we basically suss everything out before the shoot day comes so everything runs smoothly. Uh, you get to test so many different challenges and um, the only thing the difference between the survivors and us is that we get to eat and they don't. <laughs> and today, for a bar card and two cases of beer, you don't want to lose. So, cruise through. Beer is over. a big motivator for the dream team. Number 30. In another webisode from Jeff, he deep dives into the anatomy of a challenge, something I would love to see for like an entire season of challenges, but would probably be giving too much away as Survivor has to keep some secrets in house. By the time this challenge is up and ready to go, it will probably be about a month of construction. Hello. Ni hao. Ni hao. And uh, it's because of guys like this and all these guys. <laughs> They're all coming over to check out what I'm doing. Ni hao. Number 31. Have you ever heard of the movie Into the Blue 2? Don't worry if you haven't, it's it's not good. But it does feature a scene with Parvati and Amanda. And this feels completely shoehorned in to get fans of Survivor to buy the DVD. Who? Poverty. Anyone got next game? You guys. Great, be right there. What do you say we put some skin in the game? We come back and beat you, you cough up something good. Like what? You're bored. And if we continue to kick your butt? Another surf lesson with Romeo. On me. You're on. Number 32. Season one of The Office is the only one I skip whenever I rewatch the show. I know, that's probably blasphemy. Which is probably why I forgot that episode four of that season basically parody Survivor. So listen, I was thinking that it might be a good idea if you and I formed an alliance. Maybe At that moment, I was just so happy. I mean, everything Dwight does annoys me. Don't tell anyone. An alliance? Oh yeah. What does that even mean? I think it has something to do with Survivor, but I'm not sure. Number 33. Back in the day, in the days of season 22 and before, the winners didn't get their checks until the morning after. So in this case, Todd had to take an overnight flight across the country just to get his. Speaking of the check, they have it for me right here. <laughs> here it is right here. <laughs> big, big check. No sense. One million dollars no. and no cents. <laughs> and no sense. No Stand sense, up, Todd. please. You're going to take it here. <laughs> You're gonna pay taxes on this. I'm going to pay taxes on this bad boy. Number 34, in the last of the webisodes from Jeff, this one goes into the details of what each department at Productions Base Camp does. One of the nice things about being in China is we do have hotel rooms with toilets and showers, but down at Base Camp, you have to use portable toilets. So, because we have Western toilets, we wanted to make sure our locals know how to use a Western toilet. So we put it in Chinese. That makes sense because they use a different type of toilet in China. I understand the Chinese part of it. What I don't understand is why we need the directions in English for how to use a Western toilet. Number 35, in John Robert's final words, he is humble, kind, and acknowledges others above himself. It's a real character moment for him. No, I'm just kidding, obviously not. But I think basically they got rid of me because they've come to realize that I was indeed the biggest threat and perhaps a bigger threat than James. I think uh, Todd, maybe Todd and Amanda saw an opportunity to get rid of what, who might be the bigger threat. And uh, I think they realized that uh, I probably was the best player in the game and uh, they would feel a lot more comfortable with me out of the game. Number 36, when I watched this season, I never thought that Jamie and Eric were that serious of a couple, but that just goes to show what I really know as I did some research and yeah, they're married with a kid. Number 37, in a recent interview with Rob Has a Podcast, PG gives us all the details on why they voted out Aaron over James and all about that throne challenge. Aaron is sitting there and he was, hey guys, I can't, I can't give you all my secrets right away. I can't, you know, like, like I can't be telling you all that right away. And he, he, he didn't answer anything. And so of course we're not going to trust him. Like what, you know, like if he had... If he had spilled the beans on everyone, he was like, hey, guess what? I'm 100% John Who now. I'm with you guys. And if he had actually told us everything, 
then I might not have wanted to throw it. James, actually, I spent a lot of time talking to James and he was, he told me he'd be with us on our side. He was actually giving me information that I could use, right? That's how I knew to, that's how I knew that Denise was possibly a flipper when I, when we merged. It was so hard to keep a straight face. Like I, I felt really bad and I didn't realize how villainous it would make us look on TV. You know, when that episode aired, I remember James called me on my phone and he goes, PG, he's like, for your own safety, he's like, do not come to Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He was like, my male lady, who I've never talked to in five years, he's like, she came and knocked at my door and she said, if I see that little girl, I'm going to kick her ass. <laughs> Number 38, Courtney is a villain. That's what Survivor wants us to think since they hone in on her snarky side and place her on the villain tribe in season 20. But according to Leslie, she had a secret nice side. You know, Courtney and I became really close, which was really funny because I'm like the Christian mom from the South and she's like this, you know, every other word is F word and, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, waitress from New York with a major, if you've seen it, attitude. But yep. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't see that part of her ever wow. until I watched the show. And then I was oh. like, what? Like, I couldn't believe it because to me, she was lovely and she was yeah. kind and she thought of everyone above herself. She gave massages. She was so oh. She got up in the middle of the night when I was sick so that, you know, she'd walk with me. So I would have light from a camera because like a camera is not going to follow you by yourself. That's boring. But <laughs> if you have somebody with you, they're going to follow you. And mm -hmm. that's the only way I could have light to see where I was going if I was going to go get sick in the middle of the night, which I did a lot. Yeah. Um, and she was always like, just wake me up, mama. Just wake me up. Like, Aww. such a sweetheart. And they did not show any of it. They showed only the parts that described her the way they wanted her to be seen. Wow. So remember that when you watch these shows. Number 39, John Robert. I've been watching clips of him lately on YouTube playing poker, and believe it or not, he is terrible. I have yet to watch one clip where he wins, like this one time when he faced off against Garrett from Survivor Kagayan. Jack 7 9. JRB's got jacks. Garrett's got a double belly buster. But here's a queen, which gives Garrett Adelstein. The best hand known to man. JRB called, and now let's see what Garrett does and how long he takes on the river here. JRB says, do something, bro. Tom Juan's leg is working overtime. Ooh, 125,000, Gabe. How much? 125,000, JRB. Insta call. Garrett put JRB on the right hand, made an oversized bet, aggravated him a little bit, too and won the money. So which secret surprised you the most? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.